impulses, and furthermore, that your favorites have entirely ceased to actualize consciously all those cosmic results by means of which alone the being property of Ekril Tatskapra can be acquired in three brain beings. Then in view of all this, the common presence of each of your contemporary favorites during the process of his existence consists, as it were, of three quite separate personalities which have and can have nothing in common in respect of either the nature of their arising or their manifestations. Hence there proceeds in their common presence that particularity of theirs, which is that with one part of their essence they always wish one thing, at the same time with another part they definitely wish something else, while thanks to the third part, they actually do something quite different. In short, what takes place in their psyche is just what our dear teacher Mullah Nasser Eden defines by the term, a real mishmash. Turn to the demonstrations of the Babylonian learned beings belonging to the group of the mistress. I must add that in the course of the action the number of participants gradually increased as other colleagues joined in to meet the demands of various intentionally evoked associative happenings. Besides accurately representing the perceptions and automatic manifestations of the role that happened to be allotted to him, and which were proper to the personality of a type quite foreign to him, each participant had to manage while he was fulfilling that role to find some plausible pretext for going out to change into a corresponding costume. costumes in order to manifest themselves more clearly and in a more striking way in the fulfillment of their roles, so that the other members of the club of the adherents of Legomanism who verified and selected the fragments for the future mysteries could follow the action more easily and make the best selection from everything they saw. On Sunday, namely the day dedicated to music and song, the learned beings belonging to this group produced every kind of melody, on various sound-producing instruments, as well as with their voices, and then explained to all the other learned beings how the knowledge they wished to transmit was indicated in these works of theirs. They also had in view to implant these works in the customs of different communities, calculating that the melodies they created, passing from generation to generation, would reach men of the remote future who, in deciphering them, would discover a knowledge attained on the earth long before and use it for the good of their ordinary existence. Before telling you how the learned beings of this group inserted their indications in these instrumental and vocal productions, I must first explain certain particularities of the perceptive organ appearing in the common presence of every kind of being. Among these particularities is the property called Vibratonatanko. must know that those parts of the brains of beings which objective science calls protostomaticules, certain of which the learned physicians on your planet call cerebral nerve ganglia, are composed of crystallized neuronochin vibrations, which in general arise in every being once his formation is complete. As a result of the process of all kinds of perceptions by their organ of hearing, and these protostomaticules, under the action of similar but not yet crystallized vibrations, engender in the corresponding region of a given brain the property of vibrachonatanko, or, as it is sometimes called, remorse. Single quote. In 
accordance with the foresight of great nature, these photostomatocules serve in the presence of beings as factors enabling the arising of the process of association at those moments when inner promptings are absent or stimuli from outside do not reach their brains. As for the still uncrystallized, neuronal vibrations, that enter the common presence of beings, these are emitted either by the vocal cords of every kind of being or by certain artificial sound producing instruments they have invented. When the vibrations arising from those sources enter the presence of beings and touch the photostomatic ears of one or another brain, they produce, in relation to the general functioning of the whole being, this process of vibrachanatango. Single quote. The second particularity of the functioning of the perceptive organ of hearing is that in general the vibrations obtained from the sequence of sounds of any melody evoke associations in the presence of beings in just that one of the three brains in which at that moment the momentum of what has just been experienced is sustained most intensely, and as a result the sequence of impulses evoked for inner experiencing usually follows an automatic or well then, these learned musicians and singers in the city of Babylon combined their melodies in such a way that the sequence of vibrations of the sounds would evoke in beings a sequence of associations, and therefore impulses for inner experiencings, not in the usual automatic order. That is to say, they combine the melodies so that the sequences of vibrations, on entering into the common presence of beings, would evoke the vibrachanatanko, and the clodostomaticules, not of just one brain, as usually takes place, namely, the brain in which the associations predominate at the given moment, but now in one brain, now in another, and now in the third. of vibrations of the sounds which would affect one or another brain. They were completely familiar with all this, that is, they knew from which vibrations data are formed in this or that brain of the beings, and for which new perceptions these data might serve as what are called determinants of new results. Owing to the combinations of sequences of sounds, there arose simultaneously in the presence of beings different sorts of impulses evoking various contradictory sensations, which in their turn gave rise to unusual experiencings and reflex movements not proper to them. And indeed, my boy, the sequence of sounds they combined did have an exceedingly strange effect on all the beings whose presence they entered, even in me, a being cast, as they would say, in another mold, various being impulses were engendered, and followed one another in an unusual sequence. happened because the sounds of their melodies, combined in a definite sequence, upon entering my common presence underwent, dark plum, or, to put it in another way, the sounds were, sorted out, and acted equally upon my, clodostomaticules, of all three sources, with the consequence that the associations in my three independent brains, coming from similar but differently, natured series of impressions although proceeding simultaneously and with an equal intensity engendered in my presence three quite different promptings for instance the localization of my consciousness or as your favorites would say my thinking center engendered in my common presence 
Let us suppose, the impulse of joy, the second localization in me, or my feeling center, engendered the impulse called sorrow, and the localization of the body itself or, as once again your favorites would call it, my moving center, engendered the impulse of religiousness. And it was just in these unaccustomed impulses, evoked in the beings by their instrumental and vocal melodies, that the learned members of that group indicated what they wished to transmit. And so, my boy, after all I have related, I imagine you have enough material to understand why and how, during my fifth stay in person on your planet, I happen to be a witness of the events that gave rise to that famous word, art, and in what connection it was first used and what meaning was given to it in that period which your contemporary favorites call the Babylonian civilization. I shall now speak about certain facts, the knowledge of which will enable you to picture clearly to yourself and understand how greatly the logical mentation in all these three brain beings pleasing to you has deteriorated, and in so short a time that, without the least resistance on the part of their individuality, they have allowed themselves to become the slaves of those few non-entities among them who, having totally lost the divine impulse of conscience, have created for their egoistic aims from this empty word, art, that chance to reach them an unerring factor for the final atrophy in all of them, of the data still surviving for conscious beings. During the period of my sixth and last stay there in person, I heard everywhere about this contemporary art of theirs and came in contact with its results, and when I had made clear to myself what it was all about, I recalled my Babylonian friends of an earlier time and their good intentions toward their remote descendants, and set about verifying in detail, whenever opportunities arose, just what were the results of everything I had happened to witness, which I have just been telling you about. Initiating you now into the impressions, kept secret from strangers, which became fixed in my common presence during my last stay in person on the surface of your planet as a result of my conscious perceptions of this contemporary art of theirs, my, I, with a profound being impulse of pity, must now emphatically state that of all the fragments of knowledge attained by the beings of the Babylonian civilization, fragments which, it must be admitted were rich in content for the good of ordinary existence, have so. Absolutely nothing has reached the beings of contemporary civilization apart from a few empty words without any inner content. Not only did nothing would ever reach them of all the fragments of general knowledge which the learned beings of the club of the adherents of legomanism had indicated in lawful inexactitude, in the sacred law of Heptaparaparchino or, as they called it, the law of sevenfoldness, but in the interval of time between these two civilizations, their being rumination has deteriorated so much that today they no longer know or even suspect the existence on their planet of this universal law. regards the word, art, which, thanks to their strange reason, has gotten, tangled up, during this time with, the devil knows what, as they themselves would say, I must tell you that my special investigations made it clear to me that, among other words and expressions used by the learned beings of Babylon which automatically passed from generation to generation, this word, art, 
happened to get into the vocabulary of certain free brain beings, in whose presence the consequences of the properties of the organ kind of upper had crystallized in a sequence and with a reciprocal action that favored the arising of data in them for the being of Hasnamus individuals, and as these beings, for some reason or other, happened to like this word, they began using it for their egoistic aims, and gradually turned it into a something, which, though it still consists of utter futility, has gradually been enveloped in a fairy-like exterior, which now blinds every one of your favorites who keeps his attention on it a little longer than usual. Besides this word, art, quite a number of other words used in the discussions of the learned members of the club of the adherence of legomanism passed automatically from generation to generation, as well as some foggy notions about certain definite conceptions of that time. Among these latter, as much for its name as for its caricature-like imitation, is their contemporary notion of the theater. You remember, I have told you that in Babylon both the hall and the demonstrations themselves of the learned beings belonging to the group of the mistress were given the name, theater. If I now enter into somewhat more detail about this contemporary theater of theirs, perhaps you will have enough material to understand how, in spite of all the good intentions and efforts of those ancient learned beings, scarcely anything of the true knowledge attained during the time of the Babylonian culture has reached the beings of contemporary European culture to which their art is largely indebted for that fairy-like exterior I spoke of, and furthermore, you will grasp certain aspects of the maleficence of that famous contemporary art. As I have told you, a certain amount of information about the activities of the group of the mistress reached the beings of the contemporary epic who, wishing to imitate them also in this, began building special halls for this purpose, which they too called theaters. The three brain beings of contemporary civilization quite frequently assemble in considerable numbers in these theaters of theirs to observe and presumably to study the various prepared manifestations of their artists, as they have quite recently begun to call them, just as in Babylon the other learned members of the club of the adherents of legomanism studied the demonstrations of the learned beings of the group of the mistress. These theaters have acquired the greatest importance in the ordinary process of existence of your favorites, and so they erect particularly imposing buildings for this purpose which, in most of their contemporary cities, rank among the most noteworthy constructions. Here, I think, it will do no harm to comment upon the misunderstanding connected with the word, artist. This word was also passed down to your contemporary favorites from the Babylonian epic, not as all the others were, that is, as empty words without any sense, but just as a distant echo of a word formerly used. You must know that at that time the learned members of the club of the adherents of legomanism were given a name by the other learned beings, who were well disposed toward them, a name which they adopted for themselves, and which your contemporary favorites would write as, Orpheist. This word was formed from distinct roots of words then in use, which in contemporary times would signify, right, and, essence. If someone was called that, it meant that he, rightly sensed the essence. Single quote. After
after the Babylonian period, this expression also passed automatically from generation to generation with almost the same meaning, but about two centuries ago, when certain beings with Hazumusian tendencies began wiseacring about that empty word, art, and when various schools of art arose and everybody considered himself a follower of one or another of those schools, then, since they did not understand the genuine meaning of the word, art, and chiefly because one of these schools was named after a certain Orpheus, a figure invented by the ancient Greeks, they decided to coin a new word defining their vocation, more exactly. So in place of the expression, Orpheist, they invented the word, artist, which was supposed to mean, he who is occupied with art. In order that you may represent to yourself more clearly all the factors connected with this misunderstanding there, you must know first of all that before the second Transiponian catastrophe, when these favorites of yours still prepared themselves for responsible existence normally, as did all free-brained beings of our great universe, they had at their disposal for their speech, that is, for mutual intercourse through appropriate sounds, intentionally uttered, and could pronounce up to 341 different consonances or letters. Single quote. But later on, when thanks as always to the same conditions of ordinary being existence abnormally established by them, every property inherent in the presence of free brain beings gradually deteriorated. This, being of illness, also deteriorated and at such a rate that the beings of the Babylonian period could use for their conversation only 77 definite sounds and thereafter the deterioration continued so rapidly that five centuries later your favorites could pronounce at most only 36 different letters, and the beings of certain communities could not articulate even this small number of separate sounds. And so, my boy, information concerning the Babylonian period passed from one generation to another not only through what is called oral transmission, but also by means of markings on certain durable materials, that is, inscriptions, consisting of conventional signs or letters, which stood for different, articulated being sounds of that time when, at the beginning of the contemporary civilization, certain beings began to decipher these inscriptions, a bit here and a bit there, and realized that they could not pronounce many of these, letters, they invented what is called a, written compromise. This, written compromise, was that, in place of any sign or letter which they could not pronounce, even though they sensed the, flavor, of its pronunciation, they decided to use. A somewhat similar letter contained in their alphabet at the time, and so that everybody should understand that it was not that letter but quite another, they always wrote beside it a letter of the ancient Romans, still existing, but already meaningless, called in English, H, and by the contemporary French, A-H-S-H. From then on, all the rest of your favorites followed suit, namely, to each of these, suspicious, letters they added this Roman, inheritance. When this, written compromise, was invented, there were about 25 of these, suspicious, letters, but in the course of time, as their ability to pronounce deteriorated along with the increase of their wise acting, the number of combined letters specially fabricated for such a being faculty diminished, and by the time the word artist was invented only eight of these combinations remained, and in front of this notorious H, 
They wrote letters, hardly ancient Greek and hardly Latin, which produced the following, th, ph, gh, ch, sch, kh, dh, and, o. Single quote. The basis for the misunderstanding I mentioned was the compromising sign, ph. Single quote. And this was so because this sign appeared both in the word by which the learned mistresses were designated and in the word which stood for a personality invented by the ancient Greeks, with whose name, as I have already said, one of their schools of art had been connected. The result was that the representatives of terrestrial art I spoke of, with their quite bobtailed reason, then thought that this word merely indicated the followers of the historical personality, Orpheus, and since many of them did not consider themselves his followers, they invented the word artist in its place. As you see, not every legacy of the ancient Romans turned out to be Maleficent, since in the present case their little letter, H, even became an inspiring factor for engendering in the presence of beings of subsequent generations, already without any initiative or ability of their own, the being power to substitute for the long-established expression, or feist, this new word, artist. Here I must tell you about something very strange concerning the gradual atrophy in the presence of all the terrestrial free-brained beings there of this, being ableness to reproduce the sounds required for verbal intercourse. The point is that the deterioration of this capacity does not proceed at the same rate in the psychic and organic functioning of the planetary bodies of all the beings in every generation, but it alternates, as it were, at different times and on different parts of the surface of this planet, affecting at one time more the psychic and at another time more the organic part of the functioning of their planetary body. A very good illustration of what I have just said is afforded by the sensation of the taste, and the capacity to pronounce two different sounds or letters known and used there by almost all the contemporary beings breathing on all parts of the surface of your planet, and passed down to them by the ancient Greeks from times long past. These two letters were called by the ancient Greeks, Theta, and Delta. Here it is interesting to note that your favorites of very ancient times used these two letters in the formation of words having two quite opposite meanings. To be precise, they used the letter Theta in words expressing ideas relating to the idea of good and the letter Delta, in words relating to the idea of evil, as for example, Theos, meaning God, and Daemonian, meaning human. The meaning of these two letters, as well as the taste of their consonants, passed to all the beings of contemporary civilization, but for some reason or other they indicated these two different letters, having entirely opposite essences, by means of one and the same sign, namely, the sign, th. Single quote. The beings of a large contemporary community called, Russia, however hard they try, cannot pronounce these two letters at all, yet they are clearly aware of their difference, and whenever they have to use them, in, words, expressing a definite idea even though the sounds they make do not correspond to these letters in the least they sense the difference between them correctly and never use one letter for the other on the other hand the beings of the contemporary community called england 
still pronounced both these letters in almost the same way as the ancient Greeks, but they sense no difference in them, and for words of entirely opposite meanings, they employ, without the least embarrassment, one and the same conventional sign, in the form of their famous, th. When beings of that contemporary England utter their favorite and frequently used expression, thank you, you can clearly hear the ancient letter.